I had to, you know, everyone had to go through it, understand, hey, like me, this is who I am. Everyone else, this is who he is. And then mature through there. Just say, well, he's not strange. We have a better word for it now. Unique or different than most. All right. Hi, I'm Nathan slash Sage Hardiman. I'm a sophomore, not sophomore, junior at Avonworth. And uh, I really like Pokemon. That's a fun fact about me. And also my pronouns are actually she, her, even though I don't really look or sound the part. <laughs> Hi, my name is Adi Balsaroff. I'm a ninth grader or freshman at Safate Township School District. And uh, my pronouns are he, him, and I'm excited to be here. So this podcast is all about autism awareness and it, once it being April, it's going to be all about autism awareness month. So Sage or Nathan, do you want to take it away? Okay. So autism is a spectrum disorder and it has a lot of different causes and it causes people to like interact with others and their environment in ways that are kind of out of the ordinary. Usually in Shout, we don't usually, you know, say like a disability, but rather a capability. So it's, <laughs> it's like, in even my, in, if you think about it, the word disability is like more of a negative connotation. Like if you hear the word disability, you think something like affecting someone, but the capability, the uniqueness about it is what really we strive and shout. So like he said, autism, also known as Autism Spectrum Disorder, ASD, is a developmental disability that can cause significant social communication and behavioral challenges. And people with ASD may communicate and interact differently as others, but that's something unique, as we like to say. Mm -hmm. Since this is a spectrum disorder, different people with it can function at different rates and it can affect them personally, I mean, in day-to-day -day activities. And something that personally I don't know about is that one in every 54 kids have autism. And I think that you may think that's a small number, but really, I mean, if you think about the grand scale, I mean, millions of people have it. And also, uh, to kind of remove the negative connotation from it, this year, um, they removed, they changed Autism Awareness Month to Autism Acceptance Month to basically say, yes, people have autism, we need to start treating them as regular, everyday citizens. And I actually personally did not even know about that now that you brought that up, but I think that's a really needed change and a really great change for such an important, you know, it's an important thing in society. I mean, it's something that lots of people have and that it needs to be recognized. It really does. So the history, when it comes to how autism awareness came into life, I would like to say, it started in 1970 until when the Autism Society launched an ongoing nationwide effort to promote autism awareness and to ensure that all neurodivergent people would feel accepted. And in 1972, the Autism Society launched the first annual no National Autistic Children's Week, which evolved into Autism Acceptance Month. So you can see like a really big development from how something turned into a week to a month and that even happened in our previous podcast we talked about that during our women's history podcast about how originally it was a week until it was declared a month by the former president i'm not sure but i think it was franklin roosevelt it was someone in that era that made that as a national holiday i think it was jimmy carter don't quote me on that <laughs> There are actually a lot of famous people who have autism, and some of them might surprise you, like this one, like one of the, them did to me earlier today. Firstly, there's Dan 
Aykroyd. I hope I didn't butcher his last name. I think that's how you and say it. He played Ray Stans in Ghostbusters. And he said that his interest in ghosts as a kid led to him playing that role in the movie. Bram Cohead invented something called BitTorrent, which helps transfer large files over the internet. So like when you upload a lot of images to Google Drive at once or email someone a huge email, he might have helped it go faster. Michelle Dawson researched autism and she was given an award called Order de Montreal in 2017. So there's also someone by the names, and I need to look at the script, Helen Huang, if I pronounce it correctly, and she is a best-selling novelist, and she found out that she had autism after finding out her daughter had autism. And I really, when doing research, I never expected that. Like, that was very interesting to note. There's also Satoshi Ta Tajari. I think it's Tajiri. Tajiri? Oh, sorry about that. He is the creator of Pokemon, and you talked about that earlier, how Pokemon is your favorite. And his autism helped him create the game and characters. And it's interesting how a disorder, something like this, can really turn into something that is, like, known. Like, Pokemon. Like, I never expected that the Pokemon characters, which I even have some on my desk, <laughs> came from a person who was diagnosed with autism. Like, I, I never expected that. And it was rumored to have autism. Th these are some people. Charles Darwin, who was a renowned um, scientist. Thomas Edison. We have Albert Einstein, Ludwig van Beethoven, Michael Jackson, Henry, Ca Henry Cavendish, Isaac Newton, Nikola Tesla, Hans Christian Andersen, Jane Austen, Mark Twain, Vincent van Gogh, Andy Warhol, Emily Dickinson, and so much more. I mean, and note that these people that I just mentioned were not so sure about whether they did in fact have autism, but you can really tell that there's such a lot of people, even to this day, who personally, I did not even know that they had autism. And a member of our Shout podcast team also has uh, Asperger's, which is a form of autism. So, uh, Zach, if you want to turn on your camera so we can interview you for a bit. All right. How's it going? Good. We're good. How about you? Pretty good, I would say. So we have a few questions for you that our Shout podcast team had developed. Our first question is, can you give us a quick description as to what Asperger's syndrome is? And can you tell some of the pros and cons that you have about it when it comes to daily business? Of course. So usually Asperger's syndrome is seen as a form of autism that gives you mentally unique traits when it comes to communication and interacting with others. This could be very simple things like with me not being able to get sarcasm, or it could be other things like you might have trouble understanding long sentences. Really, it just depends on the person because autism is a spectrum as you've talked about. And then for pros and cons, correct, of having yeah, like on a daily basis, I know that like some people have different, um, you know, struggles or certain like striving stuff when it comes to, you know, on a daily basis, um, certain activities that you can or perhaps struggle with. So I was wondering, when it comes to you, do you have any um, advantages or disadvantages when it comes to, you know, da doing daily tasks? So obviously everybody has advantages and disadvantages. But I think some that are related to my form of autism is that I think that, how to best say this? Hmm. I think that one thing that a lot of people with forms of autism have, just from what I've seen and heard and read, and I, I'm one of them, I believe, is that a lot of them have very limited interests. So if you focus on something 
you're really focused on something, especially if you have a form of ASD. I mean, Dan Aykroyd, I believe that's how you pronounce it. He mentioned like he loved ghosts. He loved law enforcement and he loved that all his life. And so Ghostbusters was perfect for him. So kind of a pro there is that, you know, you're really passionate about what you do. But at the same time, when it comes to a con, you know, you might be limited with what you want to do. And I also, of course, another con is just socializing. I personally don't really feel as much of a need as other people to socialize as much. I have my family, I have a few friends, but that's really it. But at the same time, if you flip it around the other way, it also you know, makes you get closer to those people and it really shows like your loyalty. Like I'm really loyal to my family, really loyal to my friends. And it's just, it's how I do things, you know, just cause I don't want to hang out with as many people as other people my age want to doesn't mean, you know, it's, it's anything less. It's just unique. So really pros and cons, there's a pro and con to everything. Thank you so much on your insights. And one thing that you always brought up is that it's a unique characteristic. I mean, it's not, and as we say in chat, it's not a disability. And I mean, people consider it a disability, but here at chat, we call it a capability. We call it a unique trait that people have. And I think that's something that we should, you know, really emphasize during this podcast. Would you like to ask our na next question, Nathan? Because to be honest, I want to ask it, but just... <laughs> Go ahead with it. <laughs> hey, uh, how did it affect you in school? So, really, it did affect me a lot just when I was younger, especially. Just because, you know, when you're young, you want to socialize with everybody. You have recess. Everybody's on the slide. But, you know, I never really wanted to do that. I was just kind of comfortable on the swings. I always walked around and just thought to myself. And, you know, for a lot of people, that was kind of, to a young kid, it's more not unique, but more just to them strange, just because, you know, their minds are still mature and that's the best word they can come up with. And so it did lead to a lot of bullying. And that was really one of the biggest struggles. So autism in school was definitely rough when I was younger, but now, and I've matured too. I believe that I've managed to get a better idea of, you know, the importance of interacting with people when it really is time to interact, whether it be in school or at a job. And so really, it, it had to be worse before it got better, I think. I had to, you know, everyone had to go through it, understand, hey, like me, this is who I am. Everyone else, this is who he is. And then mature through there. Just say, well, he's not strange. We have a better word for it now. Unique or different than most. If you guys don't know, he is the co-chair and one of the co-chairs a shout and i really want to give a money clap on that because it's such a really important role in shout and zach you do a really good job with that i mean personally i don't think i i, I would be able to do that job but you take it with so so much effort and dedication which is what we really need in shout I mean, we are dedicated people to make change and you are basically one step in the process. Thank you, Audie. I really appreciate it. Th thank you, Sage and Audie, I should say. So our next question that we have, and I need to pull it up, is what part of being in the community is the best and what about it is the worst? Ooh, that's a really good question. I think... Like a lot of things in life, it depends on your opinion, your viewpoint, what you see. Because, you know, if you're in a certain part of a community, you might think this. If you're in another part, you might think this. Just from what I've seen, it seems like one of the best parts about being in the community involves, you know, just being around people who are a bit more unique in unique ways. You know what I mean? Like unique, unique people, you could say. Just people, whether it be lower on the spectrum like me or higher on the spectrum or no my apologies higher or lower my apologies with that but really it just comes down to the people themselves one of the best parts is just meeting a bunch of different people who are similar to me when it comes to some mentally unique traits and some who are you know different than me when it comes to unique traits that doesn't mean good or bad just 
it's interacting with all the different types of people and really having an understanding for them that is really great. You're able to understand these people. They're able to understand you. They don't look at you and say, oh, hey, you know, like you're a little different. It's more of just like, oh, hey, you know, you have, a, you're like me, you have a form of autism. And really, this isn't just in the autism community. I think most people have become really respectful of people with forms of autism, but the community itself still really shines. That was really good insight. And one thing that I really want to plug in there is this thing. Our book, Raise Your Voices, The Stories to Shout. Zach, as you know, you are one of the co-authors in it. And I was wondering, can you give us some insights as to what your chapters are about? And you don't need to dive into too much detail, but let us let the viewers know what really is about your chapter and what are some key notes to take away from it? I think one thing about my chapter, just when you read through it, mine's actually the very first chapter. So you read it and immediately you have like, you know, an expectation or an impression. Okay, this was Zach's story. What are the others about? You'd be surprised to know that they all kind of relate to the same thing, but with, you know, a diverse group of people. Like, yes, I had a form of autism known as Asperger's syndrome. I was bullied and that hurt me. And that's, you know, that that's sad. That's really sad that that happened. But a lot of people experience that as well in the story. In fact, most of our other authors have had the same experience. So I think one thing about my chapter is that it sets the tone but it also makes sure to establish that everyone is a lot more similar than you would first think. Does that help? That really does. And one thing I should say is if you're interested in getting the Raise Your Voices, the Stories to Shout, it's only $20 written by, if I'm correct, 11 amazing students. Because to be honest, we wrote this some time ago, and I'm slowly forgetting about all these amazing stories. But just note that in these 130 pages, it is literally 11 powerful student stories. People that went through tons, I mean, tons of challenges through their childhood and the ways that they overcame it. So if you're interested in buying this book and reading Zach's chapter, Link in the bio, check it out, and, you know, purchase a book for your friends, family, or even for yourself. So, I have to get that book. Oh, you you haven't got one? Not yet. Oh my god, you need to get it. I, 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 need, to get, I need to get that to you. Remind me. <laughs> so, we have one last question, and Nathan, do you want to ask the last one? Mm -hmm. uh, what are people's reactions to hearing you have autism? So really just back then, you know, it seemed, you know, Zach is obviously a little bit unique. I think nowadays, though, a lot of people are surprised. I don't want to say grown out of it. Like saying that is, you could say offensive to people with forms of autism. Autism isn't a disease. It's, you know, just something about us as people. It's who we are. Not who we are, but it's a part of who we are. You know, we have these unique traits. Autism doesn't define me and it doesn't define anyone else in the end. But I do think that a lot of people are surprised. I delivered a TED talk called The Benefits of Autism at our high school at South Fayette. And it's on TEDx's official YouTube channel right now if you'd like to watch it. And it basically went into, you know, some positives of autism. And that really surprised people when I said that I had a form of autism myself. But I think that just to quickly say this, just because I do want to just say it, even like a lot of people are surprised that I have a form of autism. But again, even if, you know, it's more noticeable, you could say, or you think that you have some more mentally unique traits, there are still a lot of people out there who accept you. I mean, we changed it to Autism Acceptance Month just because, you know, and that's really how we've been changing. We've been really accepting people with mentally and physically unique traits. So really the world has become much more, you know, just accepting to people with unique traits, both mentally and physically. So I think when it comes down to me, it's not as much of a thing. I have those unique traits here and there. My dad's Mr. Sarcasm. He says a joke. I don't get it. I think he's serious. 
And I look at him like, how could you say that? Like he'd say something about our dog. Like he'd be like, ah, the dog, you know, she got like, she tripped down the stairs or something. And I'm like, really? He's like, no, but that's me. Like I always, I don't get sarcasm. I struggle. Like I never really have a need to communicate, but at the same time, there are some people who like, that's not as noticeable as other people. Some people with my apologies for my dogs, ASD, some people have it more noticeable than others, but even then, you know, there's still people out there who care about them. There are still people out there who understand what they're going through under, not going through, but understand who they are as people. Like we all, we all live in the same world for goodness sakes. You know what I mean? So we all got to live in it. We all got to exist together. And it seems like the autism community is really going down that road for the most part when it comes to just accepting people who are mentally and physically unique. I want to touch about one thing in particular, and this actually, while you were talking about your TED talk, which the link will be down in the description because I watched it in my eyes, literally, like I, I was about to go to bed. I couldn't go to sleep because it was so not only interesting, but powerful because after all, you talked about personal experiences and how you dealt with it especially in a student. I mean, a student doing a TED Talk. That's just amazing. It has almost 15,000 views, if I'm correct, and even more. So make sure to watch that. But one thing in particular that, you know, reminded me about autism was The Good Doctor. The Good Doctor, if you guys don't know, is a medical drama series which started in 2017, and it is about a person, if I'm correct, named Sean Murphy, who, if I'm correct, has a form of autism. Is that correct? I'm trying to, you know, read over this quickly. That is correct. It's interesting to know that autism really can't stop you. I mean, people like Dr. Sean Murphy, even though, if I'm correct, it's a fictional series. I, I have to read this, actually. So... The Good Doctor, even though it is a fictional story, it shows someone who has autism and autism did not stop them. I mean, they pursued something in which they're saving people's lives. And I think that's something really to note that autism shouldn't hold you down. It shouldn't force you to the ground and stay down there. You shouldn't stay down there. It is a unique trait that can break down that barrier and you can achieve such amazing stuff. I mean, I know a lot of people um, consider people who have autism as, you know, not successful in life. And I think that's, A, very, very insulting. That is very rude, to especially say to someone. But also knowing that amazing people that, like, as we mentioned, the amazing people like Dan I. Karad, if I pronounce it correctly, Bram Cohen, Michelle Dawson, who are very well known in society. They achieve such great stuff. And they had this trait which didn't hold them down. So I think that's something really to note, really. So Zach, I want to thank you so much for bringing your insights about autism. And would you like to say anything else before we wrap today's podcast up? I would just say thank you for having me. And I think one thing that I do just want to make sure that everyone knows is that everything that I've said is, you know, it's my opinion. Autism is a spectrum. So while I may say something that, you know, I think or I personally believe when it comes to autism, I think that really, no matter what your form of autism is, you know, you're your own person. Just because I have Asperger's syndrome doesn't mean everyone's going to say, everyone who has Asperger's syndrome is going to say he's right because everyone's their own person. So if there's something that you think differently, then that's totally okay because you know, you're a person and it's all based on our experiences. Just because I know that, you know, there are a lot of opinions out there about the autism spectrum and that's really it. Unless you have any other questions you'd like to ask me, I'll happily answer. Well, really, I mean, from both Nathan, me, and also the very dedicated Shout team, we really want to thank you so much for coming for today's podcast. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for coming on and 
telling us about your experience. You're welcome. Once again, thank you for having me. Okay, so today we talked about autism awareness and autism uh, acceptance. Sorry, I forgot the word. Um, so we talked about like the history of autism awareness and acceptance. We talked about like what it is, and we mentioned a few famous people with it, such as Satoshi Tajiri. And then we interviewed a member of our own shout team, Zach Betts, about what his life is like with Asperger's syndrome. Okay, so if you want to help people with autism, there are quite a few things you can do. I suggest you go on autism-society.org slash get involved. That link should be in the description. And you can do things like sign up for their newsletters, uh, look up how you can help. You can attend events about it to better educate yourself. And if you or someone you know has autism, you can discuss it, like share your story, let other people know what it's like, and just spread knowledge and awareness of what it's like. One thing I should note is that we covered very little about, you know, what autism is and it as a whole. And there is hundreds of thousands of more informative articles, um, in-depth more analysis when it comes to what autism is. So one thing that you should do, if you have the time, of course, is research more independently, learn more about what it is, reach out to friends or family if you know anyone who has autism or a form of autism. And I think that really, you know, you can spread a message using what you have learned from both, um, friends and family, and also with your own independent research. So when it comes to events and goals for the future for Shout, we have quite a lot of events. So one thing that we're still doing is our Shout podcast. We're so excited for that. In May, we are actually going to be holding our Privilege Walk, our second annual one. We don't have that much detail as to what the event is going to be or the location of it, although Make sure to follow our social medias, which are all in the links down in the description. Make sure to follow them and we will let you know when we have a confirmed date and time. We also have our Uncommon Conference scheduled for June of 2021. So I'm super excited about that. We're going to be having several panel discussions regarding Autism Awareness, Pride Month, Asian American <coughs> Month. Heritage Month, rather. We're also going to be having a social justice escape room. It sounds very big, and I don't know how that's going to work, but the members of Shout will be planning this amazing event for you guys to attend. And if you are excited, all the links will be down in the description, like I said, to follow them. And one other thing that we should note is we have more events coming up in the future that we haven't even thought of. So just you know, stay tuned, stay curious, and just, you know, follow our social medias as we post a lot of stuff and we're making change. So one thing that's a little bit different, especially with this podcast today, is we're actually going to be uploading it to Buzzsprout. Buzzsprout is a website which allows you to upload podcasts and we're going to be you know, posting our podcast there as well. So if you want to see the audio version of this, you can always go there. All the links, as I've mentioned numerous times, will be down in the description. We are going to have probably tons of links down there. So make sure to, you know, if there's a following system, follow us there and just enjoy the podcast. Mm -hmm. And if you're seeing this from Buzzsprout and you want to see our physical faces and reactions to things, you can find it on YouTube. Uh, you probably have to sh search SHOUT, that's S-H-O-U-T in all caps, Autism Acceptance Podcast. Right, so thank you for listening. You can find our, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can find our social media links, sources, all sorts of information in the description. And I do not know what next month's episode will be, but the episode after that for June will most likely be Pride Month. So just 
you know, stay tuned as we have lots of podcasts coming down and being planned for you guys. And we hope to see you guys in the next podcast.